Hey, hey guys, welcome, welcome. It is time for another review, and this time it's for Final Fantasy III Pixel Remaster, which we've just finished on the channel. Just started playing number four, because we've obviously got four, five, six still to do, but we're getting there, we're getting there. Uh, so yeah, on with Final Fantasy III, thank you so much for everyone who watched me play the whole series. If you haven't, go check it out, use the link, and see what you think. I didn't mean to rhyme that, but, you know. <laughs> uh, if you've not subscribed to the channel then as well, do that, because we've got plenty more games to come, plenty more reviews. I think we'll start off with the whole... Final Fantasy 3 feels more like Final Fantasy as we know it. Final Fantasy 2, as I'm sure a lot of you already know, and obviously if you saw my review, feels like the dark horse of the family, you know, the black sheep. It, it tried so many different things that a lot of it didn't work. Final Fantasy 3 feels a lot more like the original, the stuff that did work, and then taken on slightly, you know, the next level, improving the gameplay um, than Final Fantasy 1. And what I've also got to say is the music in it was brilliant. I don't know if that was the the remaster, you know, the, the, the pixel remaster, because I know they updated some of the sounds. I don't know if that's that, or that is just what the sounds were, because the music was so much better than the others. Um... But yeah, they, obviously Final Fantasy 2 didn't totally work, so it feels like they kind of went, right, well, what worked? What worked in the original? What did people like? We'll take a step back, and then we'll improve on that for Final Fantasy 3. And I think that's what they did. And I think the game and this review sort of split into two different things, sort of the gameplay and the story. We'll come back to the story in a bit, and we'll start with the gameplay. Because obviously we went, bit, we went back to a more leveling system, traditional leveling system experience, level one, level two, blah, 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 And then you'll improve your stats. Now, I think also, obviously, the big thing in Final Fantasy III was the job system, which they introduced. I don't know how many jobs there was, but there's a lot of jobs that you can have, and you can switch your party around, which is obviously taking on from Final Fantasy I, where you picked your jobs, and then you kind of stuck with it. I think you stuck with it the whole game. I don't know whether you could change, but you weren't really, it wasn't really designed to change. You kind of just kept on and then improved those jobs later on. Um, whereas this, you could swap. You start with like an onion knight, which is like nothing, and then you can have knight, uh, warrior, viking, thief, dragoon, sage, wizard, all, all sorts of different things. It doesn't really matter that much. <laughs> but yeah, I, I feel that you know they, they, they went with that a little bit more, and obviously that was an improvement. I think they're not all the jobs are brilliant, you know, some of them I felt were a bit useless, but it, you know, it, it it was involved in the gameplay, and I think that's a big thing for it. It's actually involved, um, maybe because of the game being quite old, it's not as involved as maybe you want you would want. But you sort of are the, meant to change jobs at certain points in the game to sort of make things easier. So you fight a boss. Um, a certain boss might have a weakness and use a job that's for that weakness. You know, it makes sense. The problem is the game doesn't always signpost when this situation is. Now, obviously, I'm not a fan of real simple things these days where a lot of the games just go, do this, we'll give you loads of experience, we'll give you loads of money, make everything easy. I'm not a big fan of that. But... <laughs> Sometimes you still kind of need a bit of a hint, and you weren't getting hints. I think the, thing, the only one I can think of is, so the, the obvious one uh, in terms of a point when you should change your job is you came across a load of locked doors at two, two locations, I think a dungeon and a town. And you have a thief who can open these doors. So you put a thief in your party. But thief is really bad at attack. So what you would do is just change to a thief and then change back once the doors open. Kind of defies the point of it slightly, but you know you do it. Um, it saves you having to buy magic keys, which would open the doors. But you could also buy the magic keys and not use the thief, but I wanted to save the money. So I was like, well, I'm going to do the free thing, obviously. But the other one I remember is there's an enemy who changes his weakness as you're going. A bit like the, the not the final boss, but the pre-final boss, Zandi, did that. And therefore, you need, um, I believe it's a scholar or a bard. I can't remember which job it is. It's one of the two. And they can scan and see where the weakness is. And then you can attack with that weakness using mage, which is really good. And basically, you did need it for one of the bosses. But by the time I got to the, the second to last boss, Zandi, 
I could just do it anyway. I kind of had to sometimes over uh, attack and I, I think I healed him once or twice when he changed his weakness and other times I just didn't do that much damage. But it didn't matter that much because you were sort of doing it and you, you could still win the battle. And this is where the problem with the job system came in, I found. You know, you might have had a point in the game where you had a certain job that you should use. And you got a job, um, you know, you sort of had your character level, but also your job level, your job affinity, I think it was. And as you went up in the job affinity, so by using the actions, you got more uh, stronger in that job. So you would uh, maybe do more damage in attack or your magic would be stronger. So you'd stick with the job. Why would you go to a weak job that you're going to get your ass kicked <laughs> and then instead of just using the strong one? Especially if you don't really have to do it, at that point you're strong enough. So that was kind of the weakness and you, know, you kind of got a bit of a, um, a vicious cycle because you'd be like, well, maybe I should use this other job, but I'm stronger at this job and therefore I can get through. Why am I going to risk dying? I'm just going to keep going and therefore you get stronger at that job. Uh, and then the other problem with it is depending on the job, certain stats, so by the end, using the two ninjas, which were the strongest, which are the strongest physical um, sort of roles, their speed was so much greater that my mages never got a chance to do anything. So they weren't that much stronger. Earlier in the game, Elsa, because obviously I had, I had the best characters again, Elsa and Tiger doing the mage job. <laughs> this time flipped them around, Elsa was the black mage, Tiger was the white mage. Probably should have done that first time because Elsa's a black cat, so you know, <laughs> it probably makes sense. Um, but anyway, <laughs> um, so yeah, so to start with, when my physical attackers were changing and I was changing jobs earlier and, and trying to play the game, um, she got so strong. She was just kicking everybody's ass with her magic. But then when she came a sage and I had my ninjas and then basically you don't swap jobs. You just got the ultimate job, so you stick with them. Um, her and Tiger never really got their magic in as quick. So their levels, their job affinities was a lot lower than the other guys, the ninja guys. I mean, at the end of the game, it didn't really matter because obviously the final boss, you just kick their ass in shurikens. Just use shurikens is all you got to do. But yeah, I mean, look, in theory, it was good. And I did enjoy it. And it might just because of the age of the game, they were sort of struggling really to, to maybe signpost it too much or to build it in that much. Maybe it would have been too difficult. I don't know. I, it was it was good. It was there. Um, but obviously, um, you know, you got the jobs from the crystals and that leads us into the story. The story of it. Now, this is probably where the game's weakest, to be honest. It starts strong. It does start strong. You, you're nameless onion knights and you get given the names. Uh, Ed, dude. Elsa, tiger. Because, you know, I like to put the pussycats in. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, you, you, it starts strong. You find out you're the chosen warriors of light. And then you go back to your village and then everyone's like, woo, woo, go to the castle. And you go and, and, and you meet some new people. And the, the story's sort of developing. And then you're off. You're, you're able to go free and it gets there's some slightly weird turns where you go and help other people from random situations especially involving Minnie and Toad oh, oh I hated that magic so much oh my god but you know we'll, we'll move on from that <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah but then there's some slightly weird things and obviously we're going to have spoilers now big spoilers turns out the world that you're trying to save is actually a floating continent above the actual world. So you have to fly off the edge of the world. When did this happen? Apparently there's just an earthquake happened. There's no explanation behind really what this earthquake is, but you know, it is. And then you go down and the world's flooded. Fine. The world's flooded. Great. So there's one temple as a water temple. So you go and release the water crystal. And then suddenly all these countries appear with people in. But they're not underwater. What? what? Are these uh, mermaid people? What is going on? But, yeah, I mean, overall, it's a, it's a rerun of Final Fantasy 1, you know, the four crystals. But, you know, once you've unlocked everything and you can go around and, and, and things like that, but the whole, it loses the story, basically, when you fall off the cliff. There's no real explanation to why the world's flooded and therefore why the world suddenly appears when you get rid of the water. Has it gone back in time? I don't know. But you obviously find, you find these two mages who say there's a third mage, oh, that's three, maybe, maybe, maybe that's what we're doing, <laughs> and actually you need to stop him because he's gone evil. 
obviously. So you get your invincible airship. Brilliant. I liked the invincible airship. I was a big fan of that. Big, massive airship. I was a, I was a huge fan of that, if I'm honest. Um, oh, oh my God, sorry. Oh my God, one problem in the gameplay that I totally forgot about is you can't heal your MP unless you go to an inn or you find like um, restoring water sort of thing. There's no items to restore your MP. So that's a pain. That's a real pain. But I'll come back to that because it, it connects to something else I'm going to say. But yeah, you go in the final area as it is it's quite a big area or what you think is the final area you find your way through to zandi the evil mage and then in typical final fantasy fashion turns out there's an even bigger evil controlling him <laughs> and it's that famous well-known enemy a world-renowned evil enemy the dark cloud <laughs> i mean it, when it was like the worst reveal ever i was like it's a cloud Wow. But anyway, it kicks your ass, absolutely wastes you. Uh, and then it says, you know, you basically have, and you get saved by uh, your friends who you've helped, which is quite a nice little thing, but it, it, it sort of, it just seems like thrown in again. You've left half of these people behind and then suddenly they're willing to save your life uh, and almost threaten, uh, threaten their life. But anyway, they save, send you through to the Dark World. And I really like the Dark World dungeon, I'm going to say. Could have been a bit bigger because as one of my commenters put, uh, Ted Law, hello, <laughs> um, they, they said that obviously in the final dungeon, you go and release the four warriors of dark. So this is another bit of the story that doesn't need to make sense. It seems to be the, the cloud of darkness wants to annihilate the world of light, but this would annihilate the world of dark as well. So the warriors of dark want to save your world so they can save their world. Really, to me, Warriors of Dark would be like bad guys. So I don't really, it kind of like went a bit confusing there. But, you know, basically you release these Dark Crystals and they then help you. So they, they're going to help you beat the final boss by, I think, lowering some of the stats. You know, maybe getting rid of some of its attacks or lower its defense. Because when you fought it before, it wipes your floor. It's a bit like the Divine Beasts in Breath of the Wild, I think. Um, where you release them or you know you save them sort of thing and then they give you a bit of hand you don't have to do it you can just go fight the final boss I believe but you'll probably get your ass kicked <laughs> but one of the problems with the dark uh, the final dungeon then was it wasn't very it wasn't a long journey to get to these crystals you know but you, you would use up a fair amount of MP to fight these guys and then you could re you could recover all your HP and MP at the crystals, they would recover you as a thank you for releasing them. And then by the time you got back and then got to the next crystal, once I realised this, I was spamming all my really strong magic. But even then, I wasn't using it all up. I would still have enough for the boss fight. And then I wasn't really running down that much magic. So the HP, obviously, you sometimes had to heal. I had to use some Cura Gars and things like that. But I was not using up all my MP. And I think in a way it made the final dungeon a little easy. I'm just going to say it. It, it kind of did. You know, it didn't make it hard. Obviously the final boss very difficult until you spam with shurigans. If you didn't do that, quite hard I would say. But that made the final dungeon a little harder as uh, my comment had sort of pointed out. It felt like you, know, you, lose, you, you lose like the resource management side of it occasionally. Which I know is not really a Final Fantasy staple. But you kind of would have to do it, you know, it would be helpful having the items, the ethers, that's what I was saying, obviously earlier, come back to that. Um, you know, you'd want those, because then you could just restore your MP, and then you could have the longer dungeon, it would actually feel more of a problem. Use all your items up. I did use some elixirs, finally used some elixirs, I finally used some items in the game. But yeah, I think, yeah, that's yeah, the story they say. Yeah, it wasn't there, it was, it was probably better than Final Fantasy 1. But it's still really the same story, just I think with just the better, um, well, obviously with the better gameplay, but forget that. But I think that the way technology had moved on, it just allowed a bit of the story. Effectively, you know, there wasn't a jump. It was just, I think it was just the technology allowed the jump rather than the actual story. Um, but just as a side note, I started playing Final Fantasy IV. Oh, I think, I think we're in with the story there, guys. I am thinking we're in with the story. But, you know, final thoughts on Final Fantasy 3. Final thoughts. Maybe I should get a little jingle for that. <laughs> final thoughts. Um, 
but yeah, the the obviously the, the story's not great. The gameplay a lot better than Final Fantasy One, and I think that gives it a replayability value. You know, when I said Final Fantasy One, I'd maybe play it again just to give a challenge of different jobs. I think actually in Final Fantasy Three it's better because you can swap the jobs while you're playing through and find what you want and what you like. You don't have to pick them right at the start. You can just change them and do a few battles, see what you think. Obviously, you don't want to um, be fighting really strong enemies with really weak jobs. But you can go find enemies and, and you can practice around a little bit more. You can get this on your phone. I don't think it's the Pixel Remaster. I would advise, I think it's more of a, I think it's a phone game, a bit like Final Fantasy 1 right, for me. Commute, pick it up, pick it out, drop it down. You don't mind so much, you know, I think I think that's it. Consoles, I liked it as part of the whole package, but not on its own. I don't I'm not sure two and three, one, two and three are ones that I'd play again uh, on the console. But on a phone I think I would do it again. So, you know, if you've not played it, please do play it. Let me know below what you think. If you have played it, also let me know. Um, you know, please hang around for Final Fantasy Four. I think Final Fantasy X will be coming at some point as well. Um, I do have to say, you know, I've got that to record, which is a very different, I think, to the Pixel Remasters. <laughs> Never played that one, so uh, that'll be good. But yeah, guys, I want to thank you for being here with my review. Uh, please let me know what you thought. Drop us a like, subscribe to the channel if you have not, and I'll be back soon. Cheers, guys.